right, welcome back. In this episode, I'm just gonna go over the new investment opportunity I partook in here. So again, this is a 73 Jag XJ6. This is the last year of the Series 1 car. This has a one year only bumper treatment, which is really ugly. There is supposed to be some sort of rubber trim that connects this hoop to the bumper. Uh, I'm gonna be removing these overriders completely and trying to install the real Series 1 bumperettes, which actually go here. So maybe I'll just fill that hole with a carriage bolt or something. I don't know yet. This is the car that was known as Saving Jaguar. And what happened was in the 60s when they originally designed the E-Type, it looked amazing. Everybody wanted one. They couldn't build them fast enough. So their two doors, they were really constrained by production, but their sedans were hopelessly out of date, pretty much from the 50s, and they needed something new. It was more like the E-Type. That's where this car came into play. Let's take everything successful about the E-Type and put it into a sedan form. Hence the engine, trans, and rear end being from an E-Type. All the ones that came to America had automatics. So the only manual transmission ones you're gonna find have been swapped. There's a ton of different transmissions that you can use here, but from what I understand, this is a Jag transmission. I'm assuming it's from an E-Type or a Mark 10 or something. So yeah, that's one of the reasons that this car is kind of neat. All right, so I apologize in advance for the horrible lighting in this car, but this storage unit does not really have much lighting. So I guess I could pull a dog and go over the quirks and features of this thing. This is a 1974 Jaguar XK6. Um, lockable glove box, little storage cubby down here near your legs, fresh air vent. Uh, I don't even know how you lock. Oh, look, is that the lock? What, what is this? What does that do? I don't know. Crank vent windows, which is kind of nice. Looks like the handhold, another little cubby. Some sort of cool looking factory speakers. So what's in this glove box? I don't know, it's locked. And I'm not sure what key opens it, so. Yeah, this doesn't feel like it wants to open, but this is definitely spinning this. Let go. I push. Oh, maybe that's what I do. Oh, there we go. What do we got in here? What? A Coke mirror? And, oh, nothing. For normal use, up to 100 miles an hour, fill it up to 26 and 25 PSI. However, if you are going to be traveling above 100 miles an hour, they want you to do it at 31 to 36 PSI. Nice. In the center stack, we have a battery indicator oil pressure. One thing I discovered that's kind of funny is this clock is actually a wound clock with a spring and there's a little motor on the back of it that winds the clock for you. So it's an automatic winding clock, which I think is strange compared to just using, you know, a typical electric movement. Temp gauge, fuel gauge. Interesting thing about this fuel gauge, this car has two fuel tanks. I don't know why, it was just a traditional thing they did. So you can see that you can switch the fuel tanks from left to right, right here, which should also change this gauge. Um, fan setting, washer, wiper. Huh, nothing too interesting here. There's another cubby below that. And then down below here, you have the heating control and the air conditioning control. This thing right here was fresh air versus recirculating air. Um, pretty generic. Ooh, it's got a cassette though. And then down here you had some sliders to adjust from the defrost setting to the foot settings, you know, just typical HVAC stuff. On this side of the car, got a tack up to 5,500, a speedometer up to 140. Some warning lights, a fastened seatbelt light. Hopefully this doesn't have the weight sensors. Down here we have the fresh air vent. I have no idea what this does or what this does. I just found out those were there. And then a choke. So this does have a choke. You can see that in the manual transmission conversion, someone must have used an extra brake pedal out of something. I'm not sure what exactly it does look like the pedal assembly itself is a little different, so I'm not sure if this is from another Jag or not yet. E-brake. And of course, dual ashtrays. 
Here are the power window controls. What someone did add was, I guess the guy who owned this, that converted this to stick shift was a pilot. So he added some goofy 1980s fuel computer thing that also had cruise control. So I'm gonna be trying to get rid of this completely and removing the cruise control from the engine bay, which I'll show you in a second. The veneer is in okay shape. I can't tell if it looks good or not on the camera, but it looks okay in person. It's got some cracks, whatever. Um, but yeah, no missing pieces, no tears in the seats. Pretty decent interior, to be honest. Again, this car supposedly only had 79,000 miles, so that could explain why the interior is decent. It looks like there's been some wiring issues with this ignition switch. I'm not quite sure what's going on. I see some electrical tape and some sort of connector here. So I'm sure that'll be interesting. To, oh, these aren't even connected to anything. That's cool. No real major flaws, so that's kind of nice. I guess you could say the uh, the headliner is sagging a little bit, but that's, that's pretty minor. And there's also these pull air buttons on each side. And what that is, is there is a, a vent on the headlight. So around each headlight ring, there's this vent right here, and this is a fresh air inlet for that little vent underneath there. So why did I buy this thing? Well, let me show you. Other than just being cool and strange. So this is one of the reasons I bought this car. Um, this is an XK engine. This is the same engine that was used in the E-Type. Uh, it was developed, I think, in the 40s and started production in the 50s. I don't know, you can look it up on Wikipedia if you want. It's an inline six and what was stock was on all these XJ6s, they came with two SU carburetors. Well, you can see here, I have three. So these three carbs are pulled off of an E-Type. And this is either a Mark 10 intake or an E-Type intake. I'm not really sure. Can't tell if it looks like the carbs are mounted about in line with the intake ports. Pretty crusty. I really want to tear into this thing and just start sandblasting things and cleaning them up because it does look like it's fairly good shape. I have no idea what works and what doesn't, but I did hear it run and it sounded pretty good. Um, this must be where that tube went that was on the passenger side cubby hole. Looks like this should have a gazenta right there. So obviously uh, some sort of enthusiast owned this car. They swapped an intake and carbs off of an E-Type onto it and they swapped in a manual transmission. So what I effectively have here is a four-door E-Type. Same engine, same intake system and carburetors, which should be another 20 to 30 horsepower. Same transmission and the really odd thing, it has the same rear end as an E-Type. This car is really weird. It does not have the brakes right here. They are mounted inboard. You can see the rotor right up there. So unlike most cars, the disc brakes are mounted right against the diff. Looks like that's leaking a little bit, so I might have to reseal that. That's okay. This rear end is super bizarre. You can also see that there are four shocks and four springs, two on each side. This was originally designed and went into production in 1961. And this same rear end was basically used until 2006 in the Aston Martin DB7 and the Jaguar XK8. So it's been around a long time. I had no idea that these cars were that exotic underneath the skin. That carburetor and intake setup is super desirable. I could probably sell just that and that would pay back what I paid for the whole car. Huge trunk in this thing. We got a car cover some trim for the rear window. Looks like a tool kit. Being a California car, I mean, there is not much, if any, rust on this thing at all. So that's, that's the biggest reason. So anyway, that's the Jag project. This is not on the top of my list right now. I don't know when I'm gonna get to this thing, hopefully this winter. Um, but I am really excited about it. I think it's got a lot of potential. It's a super cool car. 
again i i had no idea what made these cars so special until i found this one for sale and started reading about them but after understanding everything under the skin i mean these are super cool i can't wait to drive this thing and it's gonna happen so stay tuned Well, not as much momentum as I thought. 